So the problem is, when you have the gas laser, there are always uh, intensity fluctuations on the order of around 2%. So you can see that there. Uh, that's data from, uh, that's intensity fl fluctuations from our uh, titanium sapphire laser in the lab, and you can see it's about 2% over 250 seconds. So obviously this is no good for, uh, for physics, so we want a way to make that a little bit better. You know. So I made a circuit to try and uh, stabilize it, and that's that right there. So our motivation for this is uh, to obtain better signal-to-noise in, in experiments having to uh, do with the measurement of, say, fluorescence or absorption, or really anything that has to do with uh, laser uh, power. Uh, and in doing that, we're going to create a device that uh, changes the, the power of our, of our laser beam, and so we can use that to uh, intentionally modulate our laser beam how, how we want. Say we want to ramp our laser, we could uh, do that any easily. And so those are just pictures of uh, uh, our mods in our undergraduate uh, Adam Tracking Lab, and that's uh, Cole Adams from a couple of weeks ago. So the solution to try and, and stabilize our, our, uh, our laser beam is to apply the concept of uh, negative feedback to our laser system. So that's to say we want to feed the uh, fluctuations back to some device uh, that has uh, the capability to uh, change the, uh, the uh, power output of our laser. So in our case, we're going to use uh, an acousto-optic modulator or an AO1. And uh, if anyone doesn't know what that is, then no worries, I'll explain it. So an acoustic opti uh, acousto optic modulator is a, a device that takes in an RF uh, electrical signal and uh, through use of a transducer, it changes it into a pressure wave uh, within a crystal. And this pressure wave uh, changes the index of refraction within the crystal as the wave propagates which sort of uh, acts like a, a, a moving mirror within the crystal. Uh, so this has the effect of producing uh, 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 diffracted beams, uh, output of the A1, and, uh, which are uh, Doppler shifted by an integer multiple of the RF frequency we've, we've given to the A1. Uh, and this can be uh, Doppler shifted up or down depending on uh, whether our, our our, uh, our waves moving up or moving down. So uh, that's not too useful for, for me. For me, uh, we use the, the AOM to uh, alter the, the intensity of our laser beam because the output uh, intensity of the diffractive beams can be changed uh, by changing the amplitude of the RF signal which we send to the AOM. So the point of this is to uh, uh, modulate the amplitude of the RF signal we feed to it based on the intensity fluctuations we observe in our messy laser beam. So that's achieved by uh, making a circuit. And I made this circuit, uh, this is a, a block diagram of what happens. So we have our, uh, we look at our light using a photodiode. So obviously the fluctuations are not going to be perfectly sinusoidal in real life, but it's just easier to uh, describe like this. So we look at our light, uh, it's going to be uh, positive above zero and uh, fluctuating. And so we subtract any, uh, any DC value from our signal, so we're left with an error signal centered around zero. We then amplify and invert the signal with uh, adjustable gain so we can choose the amount of feedback we want to employ. And uh, we then add another DC offset to this. Uh, right there, so that our signal is always positive. We low pass filter this, and then this signal is then used in, uh, as a control voltage to our RF attenuator, which is a device that takes a stable RF signal and uh, modulates or attenuates, uh, makes, makes it smaller depending on the level of our control voltage. So you can see uh, we're left with uh, an RF output which is made smaller depending on, on uh, our fluctuations to begin with. So if the fluctuations are high, right there, uh, our control signal, since it's inverted, will be low, right there. And uh, this results in a, uh, some lots of attenuation in our RF signal. Uh, conversely, if uh, our uh, fluctuations are low, our control voltage will be high. 
high, and we don't have any attenuation in our uh, RF. So just to illustrate this, um, this is a, a trace of what happens with some uh, given control voltage. So I use a sinusoid because uh, it matches the last set of slides. So when the control voltage is high, no attenuation, and when it's low, then we have lots of attenuation. Uh, if we wanted to implement this in our uh, experiment, we would basically send our uh, laser beam through an AOM. Uh, we block the undifracted beam because our AOM doesn't do anything to the undifracted beam. And we uh, send our first order diffractive beam out to our experiment. Um, we uh, look at a, a small portion of the light, which is uh, cut off using this half wave plate and polarized and beam splitting cube combo, which just acts to, uh, as a, uh, a sort of a beam splitter with adjustable percentages. And uh, we use this signal as our feedback, as our input to our feedback circuit. And uh, obviously, as I showed you before, it spits out a modulated RF signal, which is then amplified and uh, sent to our AO to complete our feedback loop. So you can see that uh, when if our if our laser beam is fluctuating, uh, it'll go through the feedback loop and.